Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Now, we had a story time about our state bird. Do you remember what that was? Mockingbirds. Today we're going to talk about a few other animals that are very important in Texas. I've written a little song to the tune of Oh Susanna to celebrate some of our state animals. Making up your own words to songs is a great way to practice pre-reading skills. This one goes like this. Oh, Texas is a big old state and is full of lots of creatures. So we picked a few that we really like our state animals to feature. Now, the first one is our state small mammal. It's an animal that wears armor and is nocturnal. Do you know what it is? Did you say armadillo? If you said armadillo, you're right. Arm armadillo, they like to sleep and swim. Our state small mammal, oh, you'll see a lot of them. Now let's sing the first verse together. Oh, Texas is a big old state and it's full of lots of creatures. So we picked a few that we really like our state animals to feature. Does anyone know what Texas state large mammal is? Did you say longhorn? Long, long horn, they are smart and gentle cows. They are very tough and don't need much water. Oh, longhorns take a bow. Now, does anyone know what Texas state flying mammal is? There aren't many kinds of flying mammals, so you may be able to guess what type of animal it is. Did you say bat? You're right, specifically the Mexican free-tailed bat. Mexican free-tailed bat, they like to live in caves. They eat bugs and they migrate, echolocate with sound waves. Great job, everyone. Our story for today is a book about our state small mammal. And it's called, well, you can guess what the first word is. It starts with A and it goes armadillo. Did you get that right? Armadillo Ray. Written by John Bifus, illustrated by Peggy Turley. Let's see what's going on with Armadillo Ray. I think there's a hint in the end pages. What do you see there? I see stars. I wonder what Armadillo Ray is thinking about. Armadillo Ray lived in the desert where the tumbleweeds rolled past like children turning somersaults. Like all armadillos, Ray liked to explore at night, because he's nocturnal. When the fierce sun had gone to bed, he would scamper across the cool rocks and dig in the sand with his strong young paws. When he saw a cactus, he pretended he, he was a bad guy. Stick him up, he would say. Ray was an imaginative armadillo. Ray was also an inquisitive armadillo. Do you know what the word inquisitive means? It means someone who likes to ask a lot of questions. Often he would peer into the clear night sky and contemplate the moon. Some nights the moon was full and round and white. You may remember our moon song. Soon a full moon will light up your darkest night. Other nights the moon was a half circle or it was only a silver sliver, like the stinger on the tail of a scorpion. Armadillo Ray was puzzled. What was this magic thing in the sky? How could it have so many shapes? Ray decided to ask the other desert dwellers about the moon. The first night Ray went looking for an answer, he came across his friend, the... Do you see these animals? They are long reptiles with tongues that stick out and they say, Sss. it's a snake. They were dancing. They whipped their snaky bodies into the air. Hello, said Ray. Hello, said the snakes. I have a question, said Ray. What is the moon? What a silly question for a young armadillo, the snakes said. Everybody knows the moon is a great serpent that can twist into many different shapes. Some nights it coils into a tight round ball. Tonight it has bent itself into a shiny crescent. 
Is the moon a snake? Then the snakes curled and corkscrewed into hoops and crescents in imitation of the great serpent. I can do that too, Ray shouted, and he did. But Ray was not convinced that the moon was a great white serpent. He decided to seek another opinion. A few nights later, Armadillo Ray traveled deeper into the desert. Soon he came to a prairie dog burrow. Hello, called Ray. Hello, answered the prairie dog. I have a question, said Ray. What is the moon? What a silly question for a young armadillo, the prairie dog said. Everybody knows the moon is the entrance to a great prairie dog burrow in the sky. Sometimes the door to the burrow is open, only a crack. It opens a little more each day. It is half open tonight. See that half moon up in the sky? In a few nights, it will be wide open, a bright white circle of light. Ray nodded. Still, he was not convinced that the moon was the entrance to the home of a great prairie dog. He decided to keep searching for an answer. Do you think the moon is the entrance to the burrow of a prairie dog? Several nights later, Ray returned to his quest. He soon saw a sage grouse spinning in the brush. She was spreading her wings and ruffling her tail feathers. Hello, said Ray. Hello, said the grouse. I have a question, said Ray. What is the moon? What a silly question for a young armadillo, said the grouse. Everybody knows the moon is a giant egg. The grouse who laid it used the sky as a nest because the desert was too small. Is the moon a giant egg? That's what the grouse says. The moon is a magic egg, the grouse continued. It grows smaller and larger and larger and smaller, over and over and over, but it has never hatched. One day it will crack open and the world's largest grouse will come out. Won't that be the day? Before Ray could reply, he heard a noise. It was a different kind of bird. Can you tell what kind of bird that is? It's an owl who lived in a nearby cactus. Ha, said the owl. Don't listen to that grouse, or the snakes, or the prairie dog, or the others. I will tell you about the moon. Ray was happy. Owls are wise, Ray thought. He will know what the moon is. The owl began to talk. He used words Ray had never heard before. And here some of them are sprinkled throughout the sky. Maybe you've heard some of these words. Waxing, phases, orbit. Crescent, full moon, reflection. Have you heard some of those? We learned some of those words in our moon story time. Books can be a great introduction to new vocabulary. We're learning lots of words in this book. On and on he talked. The night began to slip away. Armadillo Ray listened and tried to understand. Fingers of color scratched the darkness from the sky. The moon disappeared and the sun came up. The owl finished his story. He looked down from the cactus. Ray was lying on the ground, his head on his paws. Ray knew the owl was wise and he believed the owl had told him the truth, but somehow the owl's story had seemed the most unbelievable of all. Ray was a tired armadillo. As Ray closed his eyes to go to sleep, the moon rose again in his dreams it seemed to be a great shining armadillo. The end. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. It's time to pass it over to Mr. Michael at the Nature Center to talk more about Texas state animals. See you next time. Hello, everyone. This is Michael Perez of the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. I want to welcome you to this week's edition of Discovery Club. Once again, I want to thank Miss Angela for sharing that story with us. Love having the Fort Public Library start us off and get, get you kids ready and excited about learning about nature. Uh, so let's do that. Let's jump right into it since Miss Angela's already uh, warmed us all up with a wonderful story time. So for the month of April, we're going to be focusing on state symbols, whether it be animals or plants. So this lesson, we're going to focus on animals and wildlife and, their, and uh, Texas's state symbols when it comes to wildlife. And in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about plants. Now, something about Texas uh, and, the, and of us that are from Texas, 
we're very prideful of our state. We're very proud to be Texans. And all these symbols, um, some of these animals uh, represent some of the values that we, 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 uh, we have as Texans and we do here in Texas. So we'll talk a little bit about those and those symbols. Now, the animals I'm about to show you are not all animals that are found here in, at the Nature Center. Some of them are, but they're also representative, they're representatives of some of the animals that you can find here at the Nature Center. So they're cousins, if you will. So uh, I'm going to mention uh, the group, like the Texas State Fish, State, Texas State Bird. I'm going to have you take some time to guess, um, have you adults guess as well, and participate while I kind of share a little bit about them. So uh, we'll get started. We're going to work with, we're going to talk about vertebrates and non, or invertebrates, non-vertebrates, invertebrates. So vertebrates are animals with backbones, and invertebrates are animals without a backbone. They have an external uh, exoskeleton, which we can talk about a little bit later. So... We're gonna start with the fish. Now the nature center, so uh, be thinking about it. What do you think the state fish is? Because uh, he, we don't have them here at the nature center, but we do have uh, wetlands here. We have the West uh, Fork of the Trinity River that comes right to our property where people go fishing and from a canoe or a kayak or a boat, you can't uh, fish from the shore. Uh, and they go fishing and they're trying to catch fish because uh, uh, it's fun for them it's peaceful relaxing and so forth but they're not going to catch this fish here in our area but if you go out here you can catch catfish crappie uh, smallmouth buffalo sunfish various species uh, out here and fish are very important in fact uh, one of the things that fish tell us is the health of an environment particularly an aquatic environment because if there's a diversity of fish uh, different species of fish it tells us how well that environment is. So they're a really good indicator species. They indicate how well an environment is. So you've had time to think about it. What do you think the state fish of Texas is? Well, here it is. I have a picture of it. It is the Guadalupe bass. Guadalupe bass. So a couple of things I want to focus in on. Look at the, the overall shape. Uh, look at all these. Whoops, sorry. It's windy out here. All the fins they have, they have a fins on the top and the bottom that gives them some balance. Uh, you have the fins in the back, this uh, caudal fin there. It g allows it to get the speed and movement uh, in the water, okay? And then it has uh, uh, fins here on the side here. Again, it gives it its, its uh, left to right, it gives it balance. And those fins play an important role in the life of a fish. Now, as I said, fish are very important to us uh, because fish play an important role in our food web. All the animals that we're going to talk about today fit that mold. So this fish here may eat smaller fish. And then you may have uh, frogs. You may have turtles and other animals eating the smaller fish. And then, then you have larger animals um, like osprey. There's, it's like a, uh, it's a bird of prey that flies over the water, likes to eat fish. Bald eagle, that's a good example. Going to the ground and eating the fish. So they play a really, really important role in the life uh, of that, in, that uh, habitat making sure everything's nice and balanced. So uh, the Guadalupe bass is our state fish, not found here, but if you come out to the nature center and walk along the river's edge, you may see some fish like some spotted gar, you see some top minnows and things like that that play an important role um, in the life of that aquatic system. All right, so let's move on. And the next uh, state symbol we're gonna focus on is our state amphibian. Now, while you're thinking about what that could be, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Texas State Amphibian and amphibians for in, a, in general uh, because they like the fish. They play an important role in our food webs and they're, they're fun to, to look around and to find. We have all sorts of uh, amphibians out here at the Nature Center. We have uh, salamanders, we have uh, frogs, we have toads. If you go along the boardwalk, you, you can see uh, green tree frogs that are um, on, the, on the, the grasses there. You can see cricket frogs, um, just all sorts of amphibians out here, and they play an important role um, as predator and as prey for other animals. So the state amphibian, or Texas, is the Texas toad. Now, we don't find these around our area, but uh, we do have lots of other types of toads, Gulf Coast toads or uh, Central Plains toads, I think has a new name, um, and all species of frogs and so forth. So they play an important role. All right, so the next animal, we're gonna talk about uh, reptiles. Now, amphibians and reptiles are co collectively grouped as herps, H-E-R-P-S, herps. 
uh, but we're going to separate them for this. Uh, and the state reptile, state reptile, you probably already know. Uh, it's a very, you don't see too many of them around anymore. I remember when I was a kid, we would catch them and play with them. Um, they didn't, they didn't hurt us whenever we would pick them up. Um, more hints, our local university here, this is their mascot. And maybe some of your parents went to this, this lovely school, uh, here in Fort Worth. And I'm talking about none other than the horned lizard, the state symbol, the horned, horned lizard. It's our state reptile. Now amphibian fish, I talked about how those animals should remind us of how they play a role in maintaining our food web, the health of our aquatic systems. What I want you to remember about this is, and again, those values, uh, you know, we're proud Texans. So the amphibian and the fish, uh, how they keep everything moving. Well, Texans, you know, we, we, we're moving, you know, we want to make sure everything is running good and we we're working hard. Well, this horned lizard should remind us uh, to be cons uh, conservation minded because there's not very many of these in the wild uh you don't see them in the wild like like i said when i was a kid i'd see them we don't see them here at the nature center so this animal should remind us to be conservation minded meaning we want to take care of our of our environment if that means not littering great uh, you know protecting wild spaces you know being involved and in going to places like the nature center and supporting their missions and our missions uh, i think that's very important so and also take as you grow older uh, learn more about these animals that are endangered and threatened and need some uh, extra conservation efforts uh, towards them to help them maintain their population so hope this uh, texas horned lizard uh, keeps you conservation minded because that's our goal here in texas we want to make sure we conserve and protect our green spaces and wild spaces so that the wildlife have a place to live which is most important but then also for us to visit and to learn uh, and recreate in so let's move along and talk about our state bird. We've actually did a whole lesson on the state bird. In fact, I think I sang a song and my, my uh, daughters, uh, they didn't like it when I did that. But I may do it again, who knows. Anyway, uh, this bird here, um, it doesn't really have a, a vocalization or a sound of its own. It relies on other birds around to make a call, to make their calls. Sometimes in the summer evenings, we're about to experience that, they'll sing all night long. And you're like, oh my gosh, will y'all please be quiet? And this bird that makes sounds and mimics all the other birds around them is our state bird, the northern mockingbird. That's our state bird, the northern mockingbird. Mockingbirds. Okay, I'm going to stop because I'm going to embarrass her again uh, and myself. Uh, but the mockingbird is our state bird. Uh, it eats berries, it will eat insects, it eats a lot, it uh, eats a lot of different things. So it's used to our area during, whether it be winter, uh, spring, summer, fall, it's always around, there's something for it to eat. Um, so I guess this uh, mockingbird represents us and how multi-talented Texans are. We can do um, all sorts of things, you know. Uh, they mimic other birds and we can, and they do all these different bird calls. Well, we can do a lot of different things, we're very diverse. So that's how we can make that connection with a state bird. All right, let's move on and start talking about mammals. Okay, we have uh, four left. I wanna go through real quick, four left. So hang in there with me, guys. Uh, the next one is a mammal. We have actually two mammals, or three mammals. One's the, the small mammal, one's the large mammal, and we'll get to the other one later. So, state small mammal can be found around here at the nature center. In fact, if you're walking on the trails, you may hear some scattering of the leaves, and you may wonder, what in the world was that? This small mammal, uh, it does have some hair on it, which allows it to be considered a mammal, but it's not all covered in hair or fur. It has limited amounts, but it keeps them nice and warm. You can find them around digging around, or digging for little grubs and things that are underground. And I'm referring to the nine-banded armadillo. We do have uh, armadillos out here. You'll go on the trail, you may see one, see, experience one. You use it here before you see it. These animals are very, uh, very surprising because they have limited amounts of hair. So how do they stay warm in the winter months? Well, um, our winters, minus that a couple of weeks ago or about a month ago when we had all that snow and ice, our winters are pretty mild, so they can handle and they have enough hair on them to take care of themselves. And then they get in burrows underground. And 
uh, if you go underground, that's a really good escape, good adaptation because in winter time, uh, it's warmer underground and cooler underground during the summer months. So they can withstand the cold temperatures we have here in Texas. So the small uh, mammal is our nine banded armadillo. So come out to the nature center. If you go up to the cross timbers trail where the soil is very loose and easy to dig through, you're gonna find these guys. All right, so let's move on and talk about the state large mammal, okay? So small mammal, little armadillo, our state large animal is, or mammal is, anybody know? It's the Texas Longhorn. All right, that's all we need to talk about the Longhorn. All right, we're moving right along. And there's a reason why I'm moving right along actually. And if you know me, you know why, Get them. All right, so our state flying mammal. So we have, I said three mammals, now we have a flying mammal. Mammal that flies, that's really interesting. I'm not talking about flying squirrels or sugar gliders. I am talking about the Mexican free-tailed bat. Okay, uh, bats are really, really special uh, and very industrious. They eat a lot of insects uh, and they're also pollinators, which means they can spread pollen from one plant to another to increase uh, the, the plant life. So they play a really important role. Now, with that, you got to take the good and you got to take the bad. Some people look at the uh, bat as being bad because it can carry rabies. Also, there's a lot of myths about them, about sucking your blood and flying into your hair and things like that. But for the most part, they're more they're very important because they help the balance of our environment. So that's something to take in consider, a consideration when we're thinking about bats. All right, we have just two more I want to go over and then we'll, we'll be uh, finished with our Discovery Club this week. Now we're going to move from vertebrates to invertebrates. And invertebrates are animals that don't have backbones. So last week... We had a whole lesson on these types of animals, but we're going to cover them again because they are a state symbol. And that animal is our state insect, which is the monarch butterfly. Uh, for those of you who didn't see us that last time, monarch butters are very important. They are pollinators, much like that bat. Uh, and they're found this time of the year, they're migrating through. They go through long migrations up from, uh, they come up from central Mexico, go all the way up to the northeast part, it's like Maine. And they're important because they pollinate plants. That means they collect the pollen from one plant and move it to another. And it, of course, increases the diversity of plant life. So they're very important. They're food for a lot of animals. A lot of animals eat the butterflies, much like those amphibians and fish I talked about. They're part of that food web. Um, a couple of unique or, or special things about them is you can see they're orange and black. And if an animal is eating one of these, they recognize that orange and black and say, oh, I don't want to mess with anything like that again because the last time I ate a flying bug that was orange and black, I got sick. And the reason they get sick is because the host plant, the plant that the mother lays her eggs on, is called milkweed. And there's toxins inside of that milkweed uh, that get in and build up in the caterpillar's body. So by the time it goes into a cocoon and becomes a full adult butterfly, she or he still has those toxins in its body. So when something consumes it, well, they get sick. So that's really uh, a really cool adaptation or way to uh, defend themselves. Now, there are other orange and black butterflies like a viceroy or a queen butterfly. Uh, but the thing with them is they don't have those toxins. However, uh, predators don't know that. They just see the orange and black and they just want to stay away from them. So they just want to get away from them. So that's our state insect. Really cool one. In fact, uh, just when I was sitting here getting ready for this, uh, this, uh, this lesson, I saw... Uh, a monarch that was flying above me. So they're they're starting to come. So keep your eyes uh, posted uh, in your backyard and your green spaces for the monarch butterfly. And then the last, the last uh, uh, invertebrate, it's an insect as well. It's not our state insect because I just told you about that one. But this is our state pollinator. That's right, we have our own state pollinator. And you would think the monarch butterfly would be it, but it's not that. It is the western honeybee. And look right here, you can kind of see where those pollen, you see that big old orange bulge right there? That's all pollen. And what's happening is the bee lands on the plant, all its spiky hairy legs get all those pollen. Think about me, if I, I'm sitting there grabbing some Cheetos and I'm eating Cheetos, eating Cheetos, eventually I'm gonna have orange stuff all over my beard. There's little, several things that I'll eat and I, my kids laugh at me because I get it stuck on my beard. Well, it's the same thing with their legs. All that pollen gets stuck to them, yet no one's laughing at them because it's very important. And they can take that to the hive and make honey out of it. And while they go from uh, plant to plant, they actually disperse all that pollen 
again, once again, as part of the pollination process to help diversify, increase the amount of plants that we have, which is very important for us because that we rely on those plants for food for ourselves and other animals rely on that food for their livelihood as well. So those are some state symbols of the state of Texas when it comes to wildlife and animals. So hopefully um, you, you had some good guesses out there. Hopefully uh, you learned just a little bit enough to uh, go out there and do some more research and uh, uh, with your parents go online and, and Google some of these animals and learn more about them. And that's why we call this the Discovery Club. We're trying to make allow you to discover something for yourself. We, we're introducing it to you. You discovered it and now you want to uh, move forward with it and learn, learn more and more about it. So coming out to the Nature Center and partaking some of our programs we offer when we uh, talk about some of these forms of wildlife or reading up uh, on the library, there's a link on this on this uh, video where you can go and learn and read some more about some of these animals and uh, state symbols. So I encourage you to do that. All right. So uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll meet again. We'll talk about some more state symbols, but we're going to focus on the plants and the trees, not the animals this time. So uh, I want to thank y'all for tuning in uh, to this week's edition of Discovery Club. Once again, thank you to uh, Miss Angela at the Fort Worth Public Library for your story time. And as always, I encourage you to get outside your backyards, your parks, your green spaces. Come out here to the Nature Center and discover nature for yourself. Uh, again, Michael Perez with Fort Worth Nature Center. It's great to see y'all and uh, hopefully see y'all next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.